the back end of the commercial side of things, and you, but then you have this restless desire to want to edge forward. There are purists out there who um, dedicate their entire lives to mm. reggae and dancehall and mm. pushing the music further. Mm. And they might look at me and be like, okay, well, you're not 100% authentic because you're off doing other things. We're putting our whole life in, do you know what I mean? But mm. actually... If I wanted to, I could do any kind of music. Like, this is the, the yeah, one that I care start, about. Yeah, it's do. not like I'm making bank out of... <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Don't like, don't, don't underestimate it. It's your yeah, go, go, go. You know. I spend all of my spare time mm. working on the reggae side of things. God, I love, like, God, I love that. Killer Killer Podcast. Killer Killer Official you need the Kellervision app. 24 7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Beatbox created. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Before it's just come this year. It's a new strain. Yeah, seems to be a <laughs> thing these days. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast live and direct central London or central as you need to be, choose to be, care to be, want to be. You know, want to be uh, anywhere else, not with the likes of us inside the place. Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. Hold tight to all the regulars. Everyone that's got the television app, you know what it is. It's a sport in art. If you don't know, get to know. Free download. Apple, I- iPhone. That's right. Um, yeah, but the application is real without what we're about to get into right now. You ain't got yourself some content, then this content's about to get realer than real. I have a lady inside right now. Now, I did tell her from the jump that she was my female equivalent in reggae music. She's got her own platform popping. We're dealing with music and street culture, but she is no student of music right across the board. MTV UK presenter, Beats Radio, Apple Music, original Hoxton FM, not to mention her own platform, Deadly. You know what it is. If you don't get to know, her name is... Is Becca Dudley. The reggae female king. Hello. Is that you, what's going yo, on? Yo, I'm just going to throw it out there. <laughs> you don't want me to beatbox there. I promise <laughs> you that much. I promise you that much. But it's, it, but it's an exploration I think you go through. I think there's a, I think there's a, a self-discovery as much as a journey in, you know, you have a passion for, for, for the culture, don't you? I really do. Yeah, I really do. It's something that I grew up on. Like reggae was a massive part of my um, childhood. Mm without me even thinking about it. Like, we all just thought that was very normal, I think, in my household. Explain like, just... how. Explain how. Uh, well, I have, like, a mixed family. So my mum's half Jamaican, um, my dad's half German. Um, and so, yeah, we, we're in touch with a lot of the Jamaican side. And so um, even though we were living in a fairly white area, or at least I went to a quite a white school, mm. um, I, yeah, I was growing up on a lot of, black music mm. and I just didn't I just thought that was normal until I was at school and I was like oh you don't know who that is like what yeah yeah what do you mean you don't know <laughs> yeah so so it was always a it was always just a massive part of of my upbringing and then I went to Jamaica for the first time probably about must be maybe like 15 years ago now mm-hmm. and we had a massive family reunion like 40 of us um, people that lived in Jamaica, people that had moved from Jamaica to uh, the States, Florida and, right. uh, and Canada and London. And we all got together. And that was the first time I'd been to Jamaica and I just fell in love with it. And that's where I heard dance hall as well, properly for the first time. Sounds just I heard it, noise. but I didn't really understand it. I didn't really know that much about it. It wasn't like a big part of my upbringing. It was very mm. much reggae. So yeah, but I don't know if you've been to Jamaica. No, I haven't. And I'm imagining that the hot oh, sweatiness, the humidity, the, the the sounds and the Yeah, just audience. the smells and the air and there's just music everywhere. Mm. But predominantly dance hall, I find everywhere I go, it's just dance hall. So I came back from there and was just like, wow, this is this is the world that I wanna pursue. Yeah, I wanna be I wanna be a part of it. It's funny, isn't it, that how some places in, in the climate and the environment you have to experience them in the actual art forms of music, like G Funk is definitely LA. Mm. You take you can't take it out of there. You have to go and experience it. Mm. It's funny how geographically that works out. Yeah. Music. Well it's the route, isn't it? So you have to go and see where it was born and mm. where yeah where it all where everything grew from especially with jamaican music like it's the it's literally the catalyst of so many mm. 
subcultures and genres and you know mm. so much sound system culture like it's the question. root of it so they're just going there it's just like it's yeah. just mind-blowing yeah it must have just absolutely knocked this uh, out of you <laughs> yeah yeah are we allowed to swear because i'm like yeah, you can do what you want right? it's right, your podcast cool. go Shit. for it let's right. <laughs> <laughs> get it out of my system <laughs> yeah, just get it all out now <laughs> Um, I would argue, and I, I will definitely add value to what you just said, I would say classical music and reggae music, maybe bluegrass. I mean, these are like DNA of music now. Like, you can't... They're not one, they're not, they're not one in the same, but they all come from chord progression and frequencies. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, yeah. Uroy, there would be no MCs yeah. or DJs. There would be none. It's true, it's true. And it's just, it's it's crazy how it's just this small, tiny little island yeah. that has just had such an impact on the entire world. And like, yeah. so much mainstream music is, is looking back to those OGs. Mm. It's fascinating. But it didn't start out that way with you, was it? Because obviously you've got a career spanning for your, for your age. You, you've, your trajectory is like... like you're yeah, I've been <sighs> presenting for 10 years now. 10 years, casual, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> ten years. It will be. Will up, will up, Yeah, it will be ten years at MTV in October. That's not basic. <laughs> that's not, not basic. No, hey, I, you know, that's amazing. I honestly didn't think I would last a year there. Really? Because I didn't hadn't had any experience before. I just kind of went in blindly, and they usually switch up presenters real quick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, every year I'd just be panicked that I was just going to get cut and then I just kept staying. So it's been it's been pretty amazing. What's the secret? What's the secret to not getting cut? What's the secret to sustaining? Um, Truly, I don't know, but I think kindness has a lot to do with it. Mm. I think if people um, enjoy working with you, they will keep you around. Mm. And, that, and I... Um, not to toot my own horn. <laughs> That's but what we're here really to do, babe. Nice. That's what we're here to do. We're, we're here to do that. But I, I, I just, I think people, I just get along with people and I'm, mm. I'm not hard work at mm. all. And, you know, I've worked on all sides of the camera and I know what it takes. And I've just, I, yeah, I've just made some really good friends over mm. the years and, um, and I love it. Mm. Like, I love it. It's not like ever been a chore. So I think when you get to big for it mm. or you feel like you yeah like you're not so excited by it anymore it's probably mm. going to start showing and people don't really aren't so interested in that they want like mm. you know the hunger you can almost tell in your own patterns when something oh you know what i can't do this anymore i'm not yeah. enjoying it anymore you can feel it can't you there's an yeah. instinct that kicks in that when it feels slightly weighted when you walk isn't it yeah, for sure. And I still, I'm just still in there, like, with big puppy dog eyes, like, oh, my God, this is so fun. Like, you came up as well through modelling, all within the entertainment genre. Like, these are very, what we're doing here is, like, two or three different worlds apart, aren't they? This oh, is, my God, so many different worlds, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's not that, you know. Do you know, before that, I was doing fashion styling. So I was, you? Yeah, so I, was, I went to uni and studied fashion styling and photography, mm. London College of Fashion, got my degree there. And then I um, I think I got scouted to do modelling during that time. Mm. So I was doing that. And at the same time, I was assisting stylists. I was writing for a fashion magazine. I was um, working in personal shopping, which is how I met our mutual friend, Hibba. Oh, Ty Hibba, um, who, who connected the dots, man. Big, Big up, up Hibba. Hibba. love you. Dot connector, <laughs> yeah. And yeah, like... I, I, I was working in fashion and that was kind of the route that I was going down and music was just something that I loved and mm. hadn't thought about it being a career. Presenting mm. hadn't ever crossed my mind because I was quite shy. Uh, maybe shy is the wrong word. Like, uh, insecure maybe? Or like, um, yeah, that would self-conscious. Be, yeah, I get you. Self-conscious. For sure. And, which isn't really ideal for a model, and but I think a lot of a lot of that self consciousness um, left from modelling because you have to like get changed in front of people on the street. They mm. make you do stupid things. Mm. One of the first shoots I did, I was like half naked on top of uh, this male model that I just met, <laughs> and it was you know what I mean. It's like for someone who's shy and oh, like a bit that. nervous, I was like, oh my god, Yo. throw me in the deep end, why don't you? Uh-uh. So so yeah. Um, then it was modelling, and then through modelling. That's how I got 
the MTV screen test because they had approached um, acting agencies, extra agencies, model agencies and said, right. do you have anyone who you think would be good for presenting? We're looking for a new fresh face. And my agency put me forward. And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> really? I don't think I'll be good. I don't know. Like, I remember I this well. To. I remember this well when you when you dialed in. I do remember you. Really? Being, yeah, you were very much the, you know, it's, it, you were the, the, the girl, the impact, the, the the fresh face, as you put, you know what I mean? It's, yeah, man. Every day, doing <clears throat> the news and mm. there's like events and red carpets and interviews all the time. And they, yeah, they, they throw you in the deep end as well. Like, that's another reason why I wasn't sure if I was going to... Um, you know, pass the test and stay, stick around because they, they don't train you, mm. by the way. Like, they they got me in as somebody who had never done a single bit of presenting in my life. Mad. Um, but I just smashed the screen test because... It's all I've, about how you look on the camera, ain't it? Uh, yeah, and I just went in not thinking I was ever going to get it. So I wasn't like a shaking mess because mm. it wasn't all to play for. I was mm. just like, well, they're never going to pick me. Easy come, easy go. So I was just kind of, yeah. And I think they liked that energy. It must have come across well. And I got it and it changed my life. And it was the best, best thing I've ever done. And mm. it's, it's, I still love that job. On my first week, interviewed Nicki Minaj. <laughs> I'd never done an interview in my life. <laughs> so they literally gave me the question. I feel... <laughs> that and I was like, it. so do I say hello... Nikki, welcome to the show. Like, I didn't even know how to start it. I didn't know what to do. No the prep, producer was nothing. Like, well, no. <laughs> no. I, I had to go and do prep, like, research, but mm. there was, there's, not, there's not necessarily training into how to conduct an interview. I kind of guess, I think that's, you know, assume that you'll just work that out. You'll just figure it out as you go on. Yeah. We're going to play a game called Nevermind the Beatbox. Mm. Well, you've got to guess what I'm beatboxing. Sick, okay. We've got three goes at this, all right? I'm going to be <coughs> terrible at this, but... <coughs> Are right. you ready? Never mind a beatbox, let's go. Ah! J-Lo. <laughs> what is the song? N name it, so J-Lo. Uh, <sighs> J-Lo. Oh, my God, this is driving me insane. What the hell is that song? <laughs> Do I get half a point? Yeah, I give you half a point. <laughs> get right. Damn, I haven't had that song in so many years. Mm. Banger. All right, I'm gonna give you another one. <laughs> Do you know what it be? Sweating. <laughs> I am sweating. I don't know what it's called. I'm stressed. <laughs> oh, I don't know why I do this to me. Like, Janet Jackson. Yeah. Don't know what you got till it's gone. Yeah. You're very good. One more. Okay. One more for your sins. All right. I'm going to get into oh, the recesses. I'm going to mess it up, I'm sure. All right. Slave. Oh <laughs> I know this one. Go on, go for it. Britney Spears, I'm a slave. Come on, go. Oh, yeah, that's just one and a half points out of three. That's all right. That's shameful. I'm embarrassed. Please no. don't put that out. <laughs> that's very good. I thought he's very good. Oh, God. Well, you're very good. Can Never mind the beatbox. Blah. Jeez! Yeah, 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 I mean, God. I didn't kill it, you killed it. Do you have ADHD? ADHD. You strike me as someone who might. <laughs> ADHD, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> if you got a DJ something, MC something, Grandmaster something, something something with an alternative name that I, I could easily remember, I'm your friend for life. Mm. Mm, it's so weird how yeah. those little things really stick out if it was like a regular name or something or a bit of information yeah. and someone said to me yo make sure you remember that yeah. oh it's gone already yeah. like that's just gone yeah and even when you know when you're meeting someone and you go all right what's your name because i'm gonna forget it <laughs> Kella, okay Kella, Kella, okay all right and i'll ask again like three times and then i'll walk away i'll be like don't know. I mean, I you've got a very easy name to remember, but it's, the, it's yeah, like the the sort of regular <laughs> names. The I've been there too, yeah, too many true. times. So yeah, I don't know. I think I'm um, 
I'm easy going in a like a social way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When it comes to work, I've I am very prepared. You DJs have to be. I think it comes with the territory. Like if I mean, obviously in the in the case of more commercial stuff you do, there's already ready played kind of set lists and whatnot, and all you gotta do is kind of like figure out where the pieces go. That in itself is a tough one. But also to remember your own sets, like when you were DJing Hoxton FM, like mm. back then there was a an urgency to kind of endorse the reggae. A lot of people, m- me included, would say, yo, that's a world of dub plates, that's a world of, you know, specials, VIPs. This is a world of, how are you going to remember all those tunes? That It stems back decades and decades and decades. Mm. As a reggae DJ, that is not an easy job. Mm, true. But then I suppose it's different when it's a, a love and and it's over time. Mm. Those things just kind of, yeah, you build build it up over time. You're not kind of just sitting there studying all the tunes and mm. the, I don't know. Today, I find I, it easier to, with music yes. stuff to remember, I think. You reckon? Yeah. Is it because there's the attachment of the music to it? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Whereas when you're meeting somebody, you don't know their name, and they're mm. just saying the name. Mm. Well, that's not got mm. enough enough to it, do you know mm, what I mean? Mm, if you said, oh, my name's this, and this is my favourite tune, and mm. then, I don't know, maybe you put the two together, that association, like mm. you were saying, maybe that helps. But, yeah, something about music is different. Craziest dub plate you've ever been given to and by whom? Um... The one that I got the most gassed about, because I wasn't expecting it, um... Damien Marley and Kabaka Pyramid. Ooh, hey. um, I asked Kabaka to do me a dub play um, for, from his album Contraband. Mm-hmm. And I didn't think that he would have got Damien on it as well. But he did. And it's so sick. Oh, man. It's so what sick. What is going on? I honestly it was running around my house like, oh, my Yo, day. Playing like, it 50 times. Back to back. Back to back. And then... Playing it to everybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah just walking up to someone and say, excuse me, do you want to hear something really fun? Yeah, yeah, anyone <laughs> on the street that will listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was just like, Damien Marley said my yeah, just name. Just so. on the shoulders. <laughs> excuse me. Yeah, that was a nice surprise, that one. Yo, I don't blame you. That is cold. Uh, yeah. Um, I think that would be my my favourite. i got a couple of old school ones. I've got a Dennis Al Capone one. Dennis Al Capone. Just, yeah. Couple. Well, the new. I've I've got a lot from new artists to be honest, like mm. the proteges and mm. that whole crew. Well, yes, because you're. And, that's because you're a you're a figurehead that's part, that's pushing the genre forward over here. You're one of the, you know. The, I try. Yeah, man. I think you know. What I mean, you're the <laughs> next try. generation to be kind of wheeling up and saying, "Yo, focus." Yeah. That's where that's where I am working towards. I'm obviously I have a lot to balance. Um, I have the commercial side, which is you know MTV, and I um, have a radio show on Apple Music One, and like that's commercial <coughs> stuff. I get books as a DJ sometimes on commercial things as mm. well. Um, for you know for like an Adidas or like an mm. ASOS that kind of thing. But then there's this reggae side that I put my heart and soul into and all of my spare time. Mm. And, you know, it's a a reggae platform, it's DJing, it's be a part of this new movement that's happening and just push the music as far as I can. Mm. So the two kind of battle it out quite a lot, to be honest with you. Mm, You reckon? Uh, Yeah. It doesn't appear that on socials. But I guess it's the friction that yeah. I guess creates that desire to want to move things forward. The back end of the commercial side of things, and you, but then you have this restless desire to want to edge forward what your passions are in in a particular genre that doesn't actually yeah. get a, a ton of spotlight over here outside no. of its own its own scene. Yeah, I think a few things come up. Like I think one of the issues could be that you know there are purists out there who. Um, dedicate their entire lives to mm. reggae and dancehall and mm. pushing the music further. Mm. And they might look at me and be like, okay, well, you're not 100% authentic because you're off doing other things. We're putting our whole life in, do you know what I mean? But mm. actually, 
if I wanted to, I could do any kind of music. Like, this is the, the yeah, one don't that I care start, about. Yeah. It's <laughs> not like I'm making bank out of... Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Don't like, don't, don't underestimate it. It's your yeah, go, go, go. You know. I spend all of my spare time mm. working on the reggae side of things. God, I love... Like, God, I love that. I, <laughs> I love that you I do don't, that. I don't chill. I don't have weekends. I, like... I. That's the, that's the sacrifice that I make is, you know, to forgetting to do what I love and do both things, mm. you know? Earn the money, do the, you know, the amazing presenting jobs I do love to do, but also feel the side of me that I'm super passionate about. Feed the machine. Yeah, exactly. And that side isn't, I don't, it's not powerful enough yet for me to just do that. So I'm working on just building up both things. And then I hope that one day they can really um, come together. It's interesting that you said you think that they, they uh, my Instagram looks like they go together. Because I, I always worry about that. No, they do. I think it's uh, in, a, in a way that, that you don't want them to or the way that you do want them to come together. I do want them to, but I, um, I think people find me a bit confusing I think, first of all, because of the way I look, I don't look like a... For those of you who are listening and are watching, she's fine. She, don't worry about it. She's fine. <laughs> she doesn't look any different than what you'd expect on her Instagram. I mean, yeah. my like, But if you were at a reggae or like a bashment night mm. and you were looking at all the DJs and then I turned up, Maybe not you. Maybe you're open-minded, but a lot of people are like, "Wait, what? I don't understand this." Oh, what the correlation between the the commercial aesthetic of yourself, yeah, maybe. versus the more down downbeat kind of yeah, of, of well, a reggae. It's DJ? a very male-dominated industry, first and foremost. Um, also, I am mixed race, but I don't look it. I look very white. Mm. <laughs> I got pink hair, mm. and I wear all sorts. Like I don't ever really have a particular style so i don't look straight up like a what your typical imagine like a, a reggae dj would look like and i've had i've been treated i've been made to feel like that a few times let's put it that way so i'm aware of that and then i'm also aware that my page you know sometimes there'll be me you know in a sparkly stew at the mtv awards and then sometimes i'm in spanish town with governor Mm. filming a Bashman mm. video. Do you know what I mean? Good. <laughs> so it's, it, I think that those things can be conflicting. I don't think it should be, but people seem to find it. And I think some brands find it confusing as well. But what can I do? I'm, that's just who I am. Yeah. I literally can't like tailor the way my brand, in inverted commas, is because it's just me like we can be more than one thing i think thousand percent and we don't have to just look one way this is what i hate about instagram yeah it's just like it troubles you doesn't brand. it it's just brand 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 on everything and it's like yeah. you can only do one thing it has to be really clear yeah whereas i am a big mishmash I'm a big do you have mishmash. people saying to you it needs to look like that or is this just your intuition saying that social media needs to have you don't want the audience to be misled or have misinterpreted or at least have their own interpretations of you that you can't control are you saying that is that your dis deciding or is that someone else saying to you it's got to be like that or just hearsay i've had people say it to me <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. But what higher level yeah um, yeah. Well, I tell you what I think. I think progress is a slow process, as Fifty Cent once said. And mm. um, you're going to be celebrated for this, whether you uh, see it this this uh, this side of your age or not. Because I think the whole world is coming to a place where the the taboo, the 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 niche, the underground, the there's no such thing anymore. Mm. There's no such mm. thing anymore. Like graffiti is street art. That's kind of the way it is. You know, break dancing is going to be Olympic sport in 2024. That's the way it is. Yeah. It's like everything yeah, yeah. that was cool about things, you're adding cool value to something that, if I'm really honest with you, there could just as well be somebody rolling up with a script from a producer and reading that shit out. Yeah. You're not reading it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You're, you're the real deal. Yeah. You'll be thanked later. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's, yeah, like you said, it's a, it's a, a slow... 
burner, mm. especially with reggae stuff. It is quite niche currently. Um, but I really feel like there's worth in sticking with it. And mm. and actually, even just looking at, you know, how how things have changed over the last, like, eight years. Because mm. I, st- I did a Hoxton radio sh- reggae show for a couple of years from, like, 2013, and that was the first... I'd never done radio before, but mm. I literally... They gave me a slot, and I was like, okay, mm. cool. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, let's yeah, do yeah, reggae. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, really? Are you sure? And I was like, yeah. And that's how I kind of started to learn my... Learn the craft, craft on yeah. air. And... Um, but no one... I, I, I honestly, for years, didn't know one female reggae dj mm, um maybe that was mad. my bad in that i just didn't know them i'm sure they were about but mm. definitely not in the mainstream mm. that wasn't really a thing and i think now more recently it's definitely getting cooler yeah for sure <laughs> to be um spinning dancehall like most djs now are playing dancehall yeah yeah even if they've not been booked at a dancehall party do you know mm. what I mean? so that's nice to see that's cool and it's i just think your your commercial gravitas adds value to the cause that's the other thing do you think i don't know if it does i feel like it yo how away. could it not how could it not <laughs> i don't know yeah that's so, it's sick like that's again if you weren't doing it someone else would do it Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. yeah this is true this is true coming from the roots we're talking about hoxton we're talking about you know, just coming up through the ranks of entertainment the way you have, you know. It's, mm. it's a lot of chop cutting. Yeah, yeah. And it takes a lot of a lot of work. Mm. I really my twenties were a madness. A madness. What's the future, my dear? What's the future? What's happening? What do we know? Um, Before we sign off on this podcast experience. Well, I'm just I'm just spending a lot of time working on my music platform, Deadly. Mm. I I it's basically like a place for interviews, live sessions, documentaries, a place that you can go to just to find out about like current reggae music, basically. So I have a, a playlist, um, and we're always just dropping loads of new content and so I go to Jamaica every year and I shoot with all the sickest artists we've shot with everybody from uh Chronics to oh. Taurus Riley to Coffee to Protégé to um Javelani like so so many different Mad. types of artists wow and yeah we shoot it in a way that I think is quite Athlet- aesthetically pleasing. There it I said is. that right, didn't I? <laughs> um, yeah, there's a bit of a, I feel like there's a bit of a gap or there has been a bit of a gap in the market in terms of like video content for reggae and dance. Or, you know, we have GRM Daily, mm. Grime Daily. Mm-hmm. We have Link Up TV, um, SBTV, obviously RIP Jamal. Yeah, Rest in peace, Jamal. Legend. Yes, yes. Lovely, lovely man. And such an inspiration to me with Deadly. Like, we had meetings and he would, yeah. t- like, give me advice oh, and stuff. He's just always so. in the mix, man. Yeah. You know. So, yeah, I feel like there's a lot of... There's a lot of outlets for... And platforms for um, rap music and mm. grime and stuff like that. But I haven't really seen that for reggae and dancehall. So that's what I'm doing with Deadly, basically. And What a great USP. I mean, that is... Yo... You're throwing the gauntlet down. That's just so sick. Thanks. It's it's a lot of work because I, it's essentially just me, right? <laughs> so I'm having to. So I, you know, choose the artist and I, I, you know, produce it all, do all the pre-production, and do the interviews, plan where it's all going to be, all of that kind of stuff. Work through the edit. I have um, a, an amazing guy that's shooting for me currently called Tim, and he edits it, and we're back and forth, like working out what stays in, what doesn't. I've got to oversee it. Then I'm like, okay, social media, we well, got to post every mm. single day. I've just started working with a girl called Jardel who's killing it. And, um, you know, brands, are we going to, what brands are we going to work with? How are we going to push it? You know, mm-hmm. getting it on YouTube, getting it seen, like it's just a lot of work. Yeah, so, that's the way it is. And you can tell, you can tell by the, the sincerity of the output that that is the case. Thank you. That's cool. Thank you. That's so cool. Yeah, and it's getting a really nice, it's getting a really nice reception in Jamaica. Mm. Like, it's hard sometimes in the UK because there's not a massive scene here. Mm. And to be fair, I don't really shoot that many artists over here. It's mainly Jamaican music. So 
but when I go over there, I honestly I feel the love so mm. much and like the respect and like it's just ugh, so good. It's so nice. It makes me feel like okay, I am actually on the right track. Would you move there? Yes, hundred mm. percent. It's just a matter of like when and how I would work. Yeah, because currently, yeah, all my jobs like I kind of need to be in London. Yeah. but eventually, for sure. Um, I, I fit very easily into that life. Yeah, and I can see it, man. I can see it on the on the Insta. I can see yeah. that Yeah, I've just got a little crew out there. I've yeah. got my little community. So I feel, yeah, super comfortable. So it would be amazing for one day. You know, I want... Deadly is currently a video platform, but I really do want to grow it into events, into a fashion brand. There's, I want it to grow outside of reggae and dancehall as well and expand into other genres. I have big plans, but because it's just me, yeah, yeah. it takes a really long time. Yeah, that's, but, that's you know, we've had cool interest from... I'm currently working with Clark's Originals yes. and they're, like, um, backing all the videos, which is cool. and Fantastic. Just, yeah, to have that kind of connection is, is a dream. That's yeah. literally the one brand I really, really wanted to work with. Mm-hmm. And so the fact that they like... What I'm doing with Deadly is just a massive totally blessing. Weird. Yeah. So, and we've done some stuff with Trojan. So it's just, yeah, it's a Trojan, slow, come on. Yeah. Woo. Really, we did a very cool collab with them where I got three cool up and coming artists. Well, not even up and coming, they're, they're established artists, but just current mm-hmm. in Jamaica covering classic Trojan songs and putting their own spin on it. So good. So, like, Jesse Royal did an amazing version of Desmond Decker, mm. Israelites. And um, Naomi Cowan did like a mashup of a bunch of different songs. So yeah, it's very so cool. So good. All of it is on our channel if you want yeah, to check it out. There you go. <laughs> and there's that. See, Deadly. Uh, type it out. What is it? Dead. So the Instagram is uh, just Deadly Official at Deadly Official, and you just on YouTube just type in Deadly Official or Deadly. See what I'm saying? It's there. Yeah. Actually, it's youtube.com forward slash deadly official. That's how you find it. There the it is. And we'll put the links in as well on, on the okay, episode. That'd be dope. Thank you. There it is. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much, Dan. Thank, thank you. you so much for passing through. I feel like I've talked a lot. Well, that's a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I got major word from it. <laughs> yeah, you're fine. You're absolutely fine. You've just suddenly looked back on yourself thinking, I'm going to stop Yo, talking. <laughs> that's what we like to hear on the podcast, baby. Fantastic. Thank you so much for passing Thank through. Thank you for having me. Cute. Honestly, you're a legend. And so I feel very honoured that you asked me to come oh, on. Oh, bless so you. I Thank you, doll. I appreciate the time and the chat. Thank you, doll. Thank, Thank you. you. Killer Keller Podcast out like in was out of fashion. You know what it is. Sharing is caring, all right? Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't, all right? Stay careful and be <laughs> lucky. Remember, crime don't pay, but neither do they. Stay lucky, people. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>